Hi, my name is Mallory Nelson. I'm a trainer at Salina ISD in Texas. And today we're gonna to be going over how to do the pre-trip portion of the CDL road test on a school bus. So um, keep in mind that whenever I'm demonstrating this, the way that I am doing it is exactly how you would do it on the CDL test. So, um, and also even the verbiage is gonna be the same that you would use on when you are doing your test. So when I say that I would use a tread depth gauge to check this tire, you actually say that on the test. You don't actually need to bring a tread depth gauge with you to take your test. Um, and also, whenever um, there are identical items on both sides of the bus, you don't have to go over um, those items twice. You can just do it one time, and then when you go to the other side, you can say, I would check these items the same way that I did on the other side. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and let's get started. So whenever you go to take your test, uh, you will draw a card and it, you will be given um, one of three um, different options, uh, not options, but what could happen on your pre-trip. Um, so they might assign you to go over just the back portion of the bus from here back or you might only have to do the front portion from here forward, including under the hood and, ev and everything. Um, or you could have to do the whole bus. So today we're gonna go over how to do the entire thing. So first of all, moving to the front, looking at the front of the bus, doing an overall scan, looking for any um, obvious major issues, um, checking underneath to make sure that there's no dripping um, or puddles that might indicate a leak in the bus and also checking to make sure that the bus is sitting level. So, and then looking at the top, uh, looking at the clearance lights at the top and the clip lights on the side, the amber loading lights, the red loading lights, down here the headlights and high beams, the hazards and turn signals, making sure that all these lights are properly mounted, they are um, the correct color, and there are no cracks or damages. Checking the mirrors. I have the flat mirror and convex mirror here, making sure that they are securely mounted and there are no cracks or damages. Uh, the crossover mirrors here, same thing, making sure they are securely mounted with no cracks or damages. And then also on the other side, the flat mirror and convex mirror, making sure that they are securely mounted with no cracks or damages. Looking at the windshield, uh, checking to make sure that it is secure and in place. There's no cracks, damages, stickers, or anything obstructing um, the view from the windshield uh, from the driver's perspective. Um, looking at the windshield wipers, they are also secure and in place with no damages. I'm going to open the hood. So starting here, um, just looking over everything to making sure that everything uh, looks to be intact. There's no um, obvious glaring issues. Um, looking at all the hoses, uh, the um, air coolant hose here, um, radiator hose, the AC compressor hoses, um, all of them are secure and in place. There's no leaking and there's no um, cracks or damages. Looking at the air conditioning compressors, there's two of them here, um, they are securely mounted. There's no loose or missing parts. There's no cracks, damage, or rust. Um, looking at the, they have belts, um, they're belt driven. Um, checking these belts to make sure that there's no uh, cracks, damages, or fraying. And also when I pull on them, there's no more than three quarters of an inch in, in play. Moving on to the alternator which is right here um, it is secure and in place there's no cracks damage or rust and no loose or missing parts underneath it is the water uh, water pump it is secure and in place with no cracks damage or rust or loose or missing parts the serpentine belt 
um, is around both of the both the alternator and the water pump. So they are both belt driven. And when I pull on it, there's no more than three quarters of an inch in slack. And also checking that belt to make sure that there are no fraying um, and no cracks or damages to that. Okay, looking at the suspension system. These are the leaf springs here. Checking those to make sure that there are, uh, none of them are loose or missing um, and that there's no cracks in them and no rust or any other damage. On either side are the spring hangers. Um, checking those to make sure that they are secure with no loose or missing parts um, and there are no cracks, damage, or rust either. Um, the spring hangers are securely mounted to the axle here with the U-bolts in place. Um, so everything there is secure and in place with no cracks, damage, or rust, or loose or missing parts. <clears throat> also the shock absorber is right here and that is secure and in place uh, with no leaking and no uh, loose missing parts or cracks or damage. Going on to the brake system, uh, the brake chamber is right here. There is no um, loose or missing parts, no cracks, damage, or rust. The brake line here and brake hose, um, that is secure and in place. There's no um, cracks or leaking or any other damages to the brake hose. The uh, slack adjuster and push rod are here. They are secure and in place. There's no uh, loose or missing parts, cracks, damage, or rust. Also in the brake system is the brake drum, which is inside the wheel. Uh, we would check that to make sure that there's no loose or missing parts, um, there's no debris or rust, and that the linings are not worn dangerously thin. Moving on to the wheel and tire. So looking at the tire, um, the tread depth, I would check with a tread depth gauge, and that has to be on the front tires, has to be at least 430 seconds. Uh, the inflation, I would check with a tire pressure gauge. So we want to make sure that, that it is properly inflated. The valve stem is here. It is secure and in place. There's no leaking um, and no damage to it, um, no bending in the valve stem. Also looking at the wall of the tire, it is uh, in good condition with no uh, abrasions or cracks or cuts, and there are no bulges that would indicate that there is a uh, thinning of the tire in any place. Looking at the rim of the uh, tire, there's no separation between the rim and the tire. There's no dents, um, no cracks, damage, rust, and there's no illegal welds, um, no welding other than factory welds. Looking at the lug nuts, they are all secure and in place. None of them are loose or missing, and there's no uh, damage or rust or rust trails that would indicate that one of them could be loose. Looking at the hub seal, it is secure and in place. There's no leaking and there's no cracks damage or looser missing parts. So on this side uh, for the identical items, which would be the uh, suspension system, brake system, wheel and tire, I would check all of those the same way that I did on the previous side. So for the unique items, uh, we have uh, the coolant reservoir here. Um, so for this, I would check to make sure that it's securely mounted. There is no cracks, um, no leaks, or any kind of damage, and that the level of the coolant is at an adequate amount there. Um, I would also check uh, the oil um, level, and the dipstick is right here. So to check that, I would pull it out, wipe it off, reinsert it, and pull it back out, and check the level indicated on the dipstick. Um, for the uh, hoses here, I would check to make sure that they are all um, securely in place. There's no um, leaks or, or damage of any kind on all the hoses, the coolant hoses, the air hose, um, and also looking at the steering system. Uh, the steering box is here. Um, checking to make sure that it is securely mounted and there's no cracks, damage, or rust, or loose or missing parts. The steering arm is here, and all the steering linkage is all along right here. So there is no um, 
cracks, damage, loose or missing parts, rust, um, all the connecting links are secure and in place. And also the cotter keys are here at the bottom in place. Looking also at the power steering fluid reservoir here, it is at an adequate level that I can read right here. Um, the container itself is securely mounted. There's no damage to that, no cracks or leaks. And all of the power steering hoses um, that are connected here, they are all secure and in place with no cracks, damage, or leaks. Looking at the um, steering pump here, it's hard to see, but it's behind the frame. Um, checking that it is securely in place with no loose or missing parts or cracks, damage, or rust. Um, the air compressor is right here. Um, it is secure and in place with no cracks, damage, loose or missing parts, or any kind of rust. And that is it for the engine compartment. So I'm going to go ahead and close the hood. So looking at the side of the bus, doing an overall scan, making sure there's no obvious damage, uh, looking at all the windows, making sure they are all secured in place with no cracks or damage, all the lights, the clearance lights at the top, the uh, hazard or four-way flasher light at the middle, and then the three reflectors at the bottom. They are all secure and in place, and they are all the proper color with no cracks or damages. So in front of the rear tires, they're all the proper amber color, and behind the dual tires, uh, they're all red color. Looking at the stop sign assembly here, um, all of the uh, parts are secure and in place. None of them are loose or missing. Uh, there's no cracks or damage to the stop sign, and uh, no cracks or damage to the stop sign lights, which are also the proper red color. Looking at the circuit breakers, um, everything in the breaker box is secure and in place. There's no damage, there's no frayed wires um, or anything out of place here. Looking at the batteries, they are secure and in place. There's no uh, loose or missing parts, um, no excessive corrosion, and the cell caps are also here and in place. additional wiring in this box here. Uh, none of the wires here are frayed or damaged. They're all secure and in place. And I'm also checking to make sure there's no foreign objects in this um, space here. Okay, looking underneath the bus. Looking at the drive shaft right here, uh, making sure that it is not bent. Um, there's no loose or missing parts and it is securely mounted uh, with no damage. Looking at the um, air brakes tank here, um, it is secured in place. There's no, um, I don't hear any leaking, and there's no loose or missing parts, cracks, or damage. Looking at the frame of the bus, uh, making sure that it is secure and there's no loose or missing bolts or parts, and no cracks or damage to the frame. Also, the exhaust system is here and I do not see any cracks, damage, um, anything loose or missing. And uh, also checking to make sure there's no soot marks or anything that may indicate that there is a leak. Moving on to the rear axle. So again, checking the suspension system in the back. Here are the leaf springs. They are secure and in place. None of them are shifted, cracked, broken, or missing. They are um, mounted with the spring hangers on both sides, which are secure and in place, no loose or missing parts, no cracks or damage. Also, uh, they're mounted to the axle 
securely with the U-bolts in place and there is no loose or missing parts, cracks or damage. Also the shock absorber is here in, in place, secured in place with no leaking and no cracks or damage to that. Also looking at the brake system, you can see the brake chamber here on this side, a little better across uh, to the other side. Um, it is secure, securely mounted with no cracks, damage, loose or missing parts. The brake lines and hoses um, extending from the chamber are securely in place with no leaking and no cracks or damage. Also looking at the slack adjuster and push rod, they are securely mounted as well with no cracks, damage, or loose or missing parts. Also, we would check the brake drums, which again are inside the wheel. Uh, they do not have any uh, loose or missing parts, no debris or rust, and the uh, linings of them are not worn too thin. Looking at the tires from this angle, we can see uh, we, do not we do not have spacers in, the, uh, in this vehicle, but they are evenly spaced and we're making sure there's no foreign object, objects that are obstructing between the tires. At the tires here, I would check the tread depth, the tread depth gauge, and on the rear dual tires, they must be at least 230 seconds uh, in the tread. The inflation, we would check with a tire pressure gauge to make sure that it is properly in inflated. Also looking at the tire itself, uh, making sure that there are no cracks, cuts, abrasions, or bulges in the tire that would indicate any kind of damage to the tire. The rim should be, uh, there should be no separation between the rim and the tire, no dents um, or any kind of damage to the rim, and no welds other than factory welds. Looking at all the lug nuts, making sure that they are all secure. None of them are loose. There's no rust uh, trails that may indicate a loose lug nut. They're all secure and in place with no damage. Uh, the valve stems are also, uh, they're here and secure and in place with no um, bends or damage to those. Looking at the axle seal, um, it's not leaking. It is secure and in place with no uh, cracks or damage. To, to that. Okay, um, also from this angle we can see the airbags for the air ride suspension are here. They're securely mounted. There's no damage um, and they're not leaking either. The mud flap is secure and in place. Uh, there's no cracks or damage to the mud flap. Moving on, uh, this rear stop sign assembly, I would check the same way that I did on the previous stop sign assembly. Looking at the back of the bus, uh, looking at the lights at the top, the clearance lights, um, and the amber loading lights, red loading lights, the uh, brake and tail lights here, turn signals and hazards, the reverse lights and also the red reflectors at the bottom. All of these are secure, securely mounted with no cracks or damage, and they are all the correct color. Looking at the windows, uh, they are all secure and in place. Um, none of them are cracked or damaged. Looking at the license plate, it is secure and in place in the proper location with a license plate light that is securely mounted with no cracks or damage, and it is the correct color. Checking the rear door. Looking at the assembly here, there are no loose or missing parts, um, no cracks or damage, and it opens and closes smoothly. Checking the tailpipe here, making sure that there is no cracks or damage to the tailpipe and there is nothing um, obstructing inside the tailpipe. On the other side of the bus, I would check everything, all the identical items, the exact same way I did on the previous side. For the unique items, we have the fuel tank, the fuel tank cap, 
making sure that the door um, opens and closes securely and that there's no damage to that or loose or missing parts. Um, the fuel cap is here, it is secure. Uh, there's no leaking and no damage to that. Underneath we can see the fuel tank. It is right here, there's, uh, it's securely mounted. There's no loose or missing parts and I do not see or smell any leaks and there's no damage to it as well. Assembly, passenger door assembly. Um, first, there is a door light here, checking to make sure that it is securely mounted and it is the correct color with no cracks or damage. The passenger door itself, uh, checking to make sure that it is all uh, secure, the windows are secure and in place, there's no cracks or damage to anything in the door. Looking at the stairwell here, uh, there's no tripping hazards. Um, nothing uh, obstructing um, the stairwell. The tread is all bolted down, secured in place. The handrails are securely mounted with no damage to those. And also the stairwell light, light is here and it is secured in place with no cracks damage and it is the proper color. Okay, now we're gonna start the inside inspection of the bus and this is what you would do regardless of which car that you pull. Um, on the test, you will be doing this no matter what. So for the inside in inspection of the bus, first we're going to check the emergency equipment. So this bus is equipped with a first aid kit, a body fluid cleanup kit, and a fire extinguisher. And also the three red triangles are in this box behind this driver's seat. Because the bus it has uh, circuit breakers, we do not have any spare fuses. First we're going to, I have the key in my pocket, I'm going to turn it to accessory and I'm going to flip on the dome lights and the strobe light and we're going to walk down here. I'm checking to make sure that the aisle is clear and that there's no uh, tripping hazards along the aisle. The tread is bolted down securely and I'm also looking at the seats to make sure that they are also bolted securely to the floor and the cushions are uh, secure to the seats. Okay, I'm also going to check the uh, emergency exits, make sure that the buzzer comes on. Okay, moving up here to the emergency hatch. I'm gonna turn the handle. that one works and also pushing it up to make sure that I see the strobe light is working. I'm also checking all the dome lights and they are all secure and in place and they are with no cracks or damage and they are the proper color. Checking the window exits and I would check the other three window exits the exact same way. Also we have another emergency hatch here and I would check the alarm the same way that I did on the previous one. Moving on to the driving driver cab portion, um, checking to make sure that the seat is bolted firmly to the floor and there is no uh, damage to the seat. Checking to make sure that there's nothing in the floor that would cause a tripping hazard or uh, obstruct the driver's um, position here. Checking the seatbelt to make sure that there's no damage or frays to the seatbelt and that it locks firmly in place. I'm going to go ahead and do a safe start. So I'm going to turn the key to the right. Uh, my parking brake is on and my gear is in neutral. Defrost, boost pump, we check the strobe light, we check the 
uh, dome lights as well. Uh, master switch, red override, and the noise, uh, no noise switch. Uh, just uh, temperature controls, defrost, and uh, recirculation, air recirculation control. Okay. Looking out the windshield, um, checking to make sure that if there's no cracks or damage again to the windshield, no stickers or anything obstructing my view, and also checking to make sure that all the mirrors are clean, um, that I can see out of them, and that they are adjusted for me. Also the passenger mirror here, making sure that it is well adjusted and that I can see the back of the bus behind me. Okay, looking at our gauges on the dash, I'm going to turn on the headlights. All right, so the blue duck gauge is here, the water temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge, transmission temperature gauge, all of these are at a good functioning level the um, tachometer or RPM gauge, uh, speedometer, battery voltage gauge, fuel level, and the uh, two air brake pressure, air pressure gauges. I also have the odometer right here. I'm just going to check and see to make sure that all of the signals come up on the dash as they're supposed to. So here's the turn signals. Four-way flashers, brights, and I'm also going to check the windshield wipers and the fluid. Okay, those work. Here I have the parking brake knob secured in place with no damage. The gear shifter is fully functioning, secured in place, no damage to that. Steering wheel is securely mounted and uh, with no damage. It turns as it should. Um, here I have the open and close for the door, amber flashers, and the red override button. Also checking the horn, making sure that works. So at this point we're going to start the brakes test. The first thing I'm going to check is the governor cut-in and cut-out pressure that I can read on these gauges here. So I'm going to pump the brakes down. And when it reaches about 100 PSI, the uh, governor should cut in and build the pressure back up. And it should cut out at about 125 PSI. So when the governor cuts out at about 125, you should hear a whoosh sound. That way you will know that the governor is cut out. Okay, the governor is cut out. So for the next portion of the test, we're going to check the air leakage rate. So uh, my wheel is chopped. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the bus. Turn it to accessory, disengage the brake. So after the initial drop in the pressure, uh, once it has stabilized, I'm going to time it for one minute and make sure that it does not lose more than two PSI in the one minute. So starting now, looking at my watch for one minute. Okay, a minute's gone by and it has not lost more than two PSI. For the second test, I'm going to press and hold on the brake. After the initial drop in the pressure, um, once it stabilizes, I'm going to start timing for one minute and make sure that it does not lose more than three PSI, starting now. Okay, it's been a minute, did not lose more than three PSI. Next thing I'm going to check is the uh, warning signal for the low pressure. And uh, to do that, I'm going to pump the brakes down at about 60 PSI. Um, the lights should come on and it should start um, sounding an alarm to let me know that the air pressure is low. Okay, warning signal works. Moving on um, to test the spring brake. The spring brake should pop out 
between 20 and 40 PSI. So I'm gonna pump the brakes down, make sure that it does that. Okay, spring brake popped on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and restart the bus. pressure is building, I'm going to go ahead and unchalk the wheels.